What's going on everybody? Appreciate y'all tuning to the channel today here at 323 Fabrication. We are back out here again working on this barn fine Mach 1 Mustang. Um, I know it looks really good with that front end on it. I hope you're as excited as I am. But let's jump right into this. We're going to rebuild this 600 holly. Alright, plan for today. We're going to tear this holly apart, spray it out, clean it up, get the big holly off the car. Swap them back out, maybe fire it back up, see if we can get it idled down like it should be. Um, check the transmission fluid, put a little bit of brake fluid in the master cylinder on the side that was dry. And then we're just gonna go ahead and tear this dude apart here. Do old dollar store rebuild on it. Look at there. Looks like a new carbonator under that. Bondo dust. We're gonna tear it apart. See what we got. All right, y'all. This is where we're at so far. Um, got the bowls off. You can see some good varnish in this one. This is the rear, and there's the rear screws. That's the sort of metering plate thing that's on these little 600s because they don't have rear metering plates. We'll clean all this out. That's the screws out of that. And see, I separate everything. This is all rear stuff. This is all front. That's the, where the booster sets in there for the power valve. Um, I mean the, uh, dang it. <laughs> this thing. Which seems to be in pretty good shape. It's not a very big one. Front bowl's got a little trash in it, not too bad. We're gonna clean all that out. It's got 65 front jets. That one's got a little bit of trash in it. I don't know if y'all were able to see that. It doesn't want to focus. But anyway, I'm gonna spray this thing out, take it apart a little farther. Let's see what we got. That worked. Thank you, sir. All right, pulled the metering plate off. Going to be able to reuse this gasket. The bowl gasket on each side's junk, so those have to be replaced. This gasket, I don't have another one of. I do have another one of these, but this gasket come off real good, so I don't think we need to replace it. Um, I do have to replace the bowl gaskets. And unfortunately, I don't have one of these, so I'm going to put it back together and hope this one will seal. I guess we'll see. We're going to get this thing cleaned out some more. Um, and i had what i said wrong this is the power valve in the metering plate uh, i think these are boosters and then this is the um what's this again accelerator pump accelerator pump there we go i get my brain working in a minute but uh all the gaskets and stuff we ain't got the right one so we're gonna Hope that one lives. All right, all clean and back together. Only had to replace one gasket. Hopefully it's good to go. Get our handy dandy carb protector off of here. Put our trash can back where it goes. Get this bag off this carbonator. A little water on it. It rained earlier. It wasn't supposed to rain today. Otherwise, the whole car would be tarped. But it rained. So, that's what we got. We're going to go ahead and get this dude snatched off of here. Get the, uh, get the other carbonator back on. Swap. Take this off right here. No, right there. That'll hook up to the other carbonator. We'll be good to go vacuum lines on and everything else. <laughs> Carbonator swapped over, tightened down, everything's hooked up, throttle linkage, 
had to swap this ball back and forth. This little bolt thing here with the ball on the end from carb to carb. But it looks pretty good. There's not too much trash in this filter. So I think we're good. Now we just gotta figure out if we got any gas because I took the other cans home. So we're gonna look for some gas. All right, y'all. We put a quarter transmission fluid in it. There was, it wasn't touching the dipstick. When I checked it the other day, it was, but I'm guessing because it had set so long, it's leaked out. And when I checked it, it hadn't been run. So maybe the pan was full, but uh, I put about a quart in it because that's what we had. It's got a really thin oil in it, but it's really clean. Looking at the paperwork, this motor's probably got braking oil in it still, which means it probably needs to be changed. So maybe there's a chance it's okay, I don't know. But anyway, we're fitting to hook this battery up and try to fire this thing up, see what it does. spin it over till we get fuel yeah you want to do the coal yeah the coal's not done huh the coal's not hooked up oh you didn't hook it up okay you ready yeah Choke's on, ain't it? Yeah. Don't want to all get the screwdriver put yeah. in the choke. Yeah, because I've got the throttle blades totally closed. I hate soap. <laughs> so the wiring works now? It appears so. I ain't got it in there yet. You know what it is? If it'll stay there. hooked up. Right, so you run these all in and three and a half out, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe uh one, two, three, and a half. You remember how you moved that thing the other day? Mm -hmm. Maybe you got the throttle pulled back. It's off. Yo, I'm sure. Okay. I done back this all the way out. I mean, there's no tension on this product at all. Okay. Okay, now I don't know why it's doing this thing. It's pulling gas right through the carburetor. Acting silly. Kind of like your carburetor did for a while. Well, I mean, if the power valve's bad, it'll do that. Yeah. One more time? Yeah. So far, it ain't knocking. <laughs> yeah. Won't run.
tell you what I'm noticing is we got a skip mm -hmm. okay now if there's one chance we got two wires crossed somewhere that could be causing that knock it could be that cylinders firing when that piston is trying to come up so uh, I believe the skip is on that side I believe it needs an oil change too what? oil change I think yeah. that helped because it's it's getting worse as it's running which is the oil is getting thinner as it's heating up does the oil pressure gauge work? No, but I think we got a cheap one we could put in it. <clears throat> um, We're sending you. Yep. Unless it had one under the dash or something. I don't know why it won't idle down. I don't either. But the only thing different is the carburetors. I'm gonna assume it's something to do with that carburetor. Yeah, well it wouldn't idle down with the other one either, but it was idled a whole lot higher than that, right? Yeah. All right, just for fun, I kinda hate to run it, but I'd like to see if it'll go into gear. Oh, well, if you do go backwards, yeah. go forward. Oh yeah. You see that? Mm -hmm. Choke was engaged. Pretty good cam in it. videoed a lot because I've been busy 
we have figured a few things out um we put two and a half quarts of fluid in the transmission it now has reversed and at least low so that's good um i uh i just um went 180 out on the choke so we no longer have a choke the car will idle low it sounds really good it's got a good camshaft in it i'm gonna look the specs up when i get home i've got the part number for it the cam card was just ate up by bugs we don't know what exactly it is it doesn't knock when you first fire it up once it gets heat in it it starts knocking and it gets worse talking to a couple buddies of mine um think the firing order is correct i'm gonna check compression tomorrow we're gonna change the oil first thing put some probably 1540 in it uh see if that helps quiet it up a little bit because it's got a real thin oil in it it seems like and then gonna check timing and everything else and see if that makes a difference so maybe it's piston slap maybe it just needs a thicker oil maybe it'll go away who knows but rain it gets better so that would be good but uh little 600 holly works pretty good just had to get rid of the choke because i don't like choke because it wants to high idle all the time probably pull it back off and put a spacer under it too that would probably help if there's room under the hood but we don't know so it's supposed to rain if it rains it'll slow us down a little bit but maybe it won't um but the oil pressure gauge does work and it's about a quarter up it's not in the middle where i'd like to see it when it's hot so we shall change the oil tomorrow and i gotta get some more gas but that's what we've accomplished all right y'all um brought the gas from the house got some rotella t5 1540 got a 51515 wicks oil filter for this small block ford and uh i didn't i don't i still don't know exactly what motor it is but i just took the motorcraft part number and they cross-referenced it we got the oil draining and it is thin and there ain't a lot of it but i'm finna go park the dodge in the trailer and we're gonna change oil on this dude maybe fire it up see what it does and then probably pull a compression check on it check the timing see where we're at okay got the wicks filter on there i put a little bit of oil in the filter and then put it around the o-ring um it, because of the angle it's really handy easy to get to but because of the angle i can't fill it up like i do a small block chevrolet um we got four quarts in the motor and i check it and it checks full but the filter's still empty so uh dad made a good point we unplugged the coil wire we're gonna spin it over let it build a little oil pressure let it move some oil around and also get some fuel back up in it because we almost ran it out last night um but anyway that's the plan uh like i said that's the oil we're using 15w40 t5 synthetic blend rotella diesel oil um but anyway that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna fire it up see what it does i'm gonna uh, set the camera back here in the back so y'all can check out the cold start noises i think that'd be cool
not quite. You think it ran out of fuel? No, I just idled it down too low, I think. Trying to get the camshaft sounds. Thank you, sir. Well, we made a lap around the yard, so I guess that's kind of successful. The, uh, we'll let it drain and we'll check oil again. Yeah. The motors are a little quieter, but the noise is still there, so the oil change didn't help. Oh, but, it well, it, yeah, Dad's right. It did help. I mean, it didn't fix our problem, obviously. Uh, we're gonna pull the valve covers tomorrow when the motor's cool and pull the plugs and do a compression check on the cylinders. Um, the oil that come out of the car was really, really thin. Let me see here. We'll walk over here and let y'all see it. Let me grab a rag. But the oil that was in the car was really thin. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of our, kind of our theory. Dad said it might've been breaking oil, um, but I mean, it's like water almost. So we uh, changed the filter, changed the oil. I went with a 1540, maybe I should have went with a 2050, I don't know. Um, 2050 is a pretty heavy oil. And sometimes, you know, I don't know, I've run it in motors before, but. Anyway, that's where we're at. Car runs, sounds good, transmission works, brakes sort of work. Probably need to actually bleed them, not just pour fluid in the master cylinder, but they work good enough to drive around the yard, so. I'm excited. I hope y'all enjoyed it. That's probably where this video is gonna end. And then we'll, I haven't figured out what we're doing yet as far as the rest of it, but probably put a little bit of sheet metal on the driver's side floor so that you don't walk through it. And then we're gonna stick the seats and the carpet in it and all that. Um, hang the front sheet metal on it, put the lights in it and everything. The dash lights work, the old pressure gauge works. I'm hoping the sending units may be wrong because it's really low. It's like a quarter of the gauge, and I'd like to see it in the middle. Um, who knows? Maybe they rebuilt the motor and reused the oil pump or something. I don't. I don't know. But that's where we're at. Appreciate y'all tuning into the channel. I appreciate all our new subscribers. Y'all be blessed.